no more feffing about with super light wind. Today we have somewhere between 13 to 16 knots so far, so it will allow me to go out with my six meter wing. Super excited about that. Um, hopefully I can practice some new maneuvers. A lot of wing foilers out already. Actually, the wind forecast looks like it might pick up even more later. I'll see you guys on the water. Wow, an eventful session in the end. We had some stronger winds. It picked up in the afternoon, which is what the forecast predicted. So in the beginning, I went out with the six meter wing and was slightly overpowered with it. The stronger wind also brought with it some bigger waves. I think sometimes they were about chest high. And so it was very hard to try new maneuvers in these kind of more difficult conditions. So instead, I tried to get into the waves a bit, bring the wing down. And that worked out uh, sometimes for like a couple of seconds, maybe like up to five seconds or so. So I'm, I'm kind of dipping my feet into that. I don't have enough control to keep foiling a wave for like a long time, but it's definitely exciting to, to feel the power of the wave and try to control it and, and getting a bit closer to that. Again, the six meter was a little bit big for me, but then towards the end, I switched to the four meter wing. The four meter wing, though, also difficult. I couldn't go upwind as much, and it's just a different kind of wing with a boom. When pumping, you know, it's a much higher frequency and I really feel like I, I cannot get a lot of power when pumping. And I kind of need a lot of wind. With, with that wing. I don't know if a different kind of wing, if like maybe a gong neutra for square meter is, um, I think from the type of wing that is, it might be better for me and I would be able to generate more power with it. But yeah, one thing that wasn't so great, I, the camera hit the board again, uh, actually several times and the last time it cracked the board. So I have another little crack in the board. I have, I'll have to bring it to the repair shop again and I'm really frustrated by this it's just happening over and over again and I think especially in stronger wind conditions with bigger waves where you fall in more it's just hard to avoid one of one of you guys you dig from France left a comment in my last video and gave me the recommendation to put on these gong rail savers which are like these kind of stickers that you can stick to the, the side of the board which can protect the rail a little bit it's made for 
I think for like the paddle strokes when stand up paddling and for scratches and you can get on the beach but a hard hit with an object like a camera I'm not sure if that would be enough protection so also the camera may sometimes hit the board not directly on the rail it can be elsewhere I'm really frustrated I really don't know what to do I can't keep bringing the board to the repair shop it always takes time it costs money but I really want to keep producing content. I, I, I really like making my YouTube videos and I hope you guys do too. Um, so I want to keep the camera, <laughs> keep using the camera basically every session. And so I'm thinking that maybe my only option is to, to switch to an inflatable board. So I might have to sell this perfectly new board <laughs> and to get an inflatable one. So, so let's see, I need to do a little bit of research. Do you have any recommendations on what I can do to protect my board from the camera? Please subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. It would really help me out a lot. Thanks for coming along and I'll see you guys in the next one.